Hi there and welcome to Penguin Learning. In this National Flow Maths lesson we are going to be looking at ratios. After watching this video you will know what ratios are and how you can use them to compare two or more quantities. You will also know how to calculate ratios or calculate a given quantity of something by using a ratio. And finally we will look at how to split a quantity into a given ratio and how all of this is beneficial to help us in calculating the amount of something that we want to look at. So. Let's get started. Ooh la la. So let's start by asking ourselves what are ratios and how do we use them? Well, to put it simply, ratios are just used to compare two quantities with one another. Or in other words, we want to compare the amount of stuff we have of one thing with the amount of stuff we have for the other thing. So let's say for example we have a farmer who has a certain amount of cats and a certain amount of dogs. And these quantities were expressed in this ratio here. So given this, this would mean that for every three cats the farmer has, we would have seven dogs. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the farmer only has seven dogs and three cats, but this is the ratio between them. So for every three cats the farmer has, he would have seven dogs. Or we could also reverse this and say, for every 7 dogs, we would have 3 cats. And similar to fractions, when we have a ratio, that's always been put in its simplest form. So in other words, there isn't a common number that can go both into 7 and 3. So that means that this ratio between the dogs and the cats that a farmer has is in its simplest form. And again, just to put it in a written form, this ratio would mean that for every 7 dogs, there are 3 cats. So let's look at how we can use a ratio to solve a problem. So we're told that the farmer has 21 dogs and we're asked to figure out how many cats does he have. Well, we know that the ratio is 7 to 3 for cats and dogs. So if we're told this time he has 21 dogs, we have to figure out a number that would match this same ratio to give us the number of cats. So we know that to get from 7 to 21, we've timed it by 3 because 7 times 3 gives us 21, so that's increased by a factor of 3. And for the ratio to stay the same on the other side, we must also do the exact same thing. So 3 times 3 gives us an answer of 9 to meet the same ratio between both of them, and because that's the case, our answer is just simply going to be 9 cats. So if the farmer has 21 dogs, he would have 9 cats. And so now let's say we're told that the same farmer has 85 sheep, and 15 cows, and we've been asked to write down the ratio of cows to sheep in its simplest form. So straight away from the question, we're already given information. So for sheep and cows, we are told that for every 85 sheep, or the farmer has 85 sheep, and he has 15 cows. So the ratio is 85 to 15 respectively. But we've been asked to put this ratio in its simplest form, so that means that we have to simplify both of these numbers. And to do that, we have to think, is there a number that can be going into both numbers to bring these values down? Well, we know that because both numbers end in a five, then they must both be multiples of five. So let's try and divide both of these numbers by five. So if we have 85 divided by five, we know five goes into eight once, and we have the three remainder, and then five goes into 35, seven times so that means that would become 17 and we know that 5 goes into 15 three times because 5 times 3 is equal to 15 so this ratio in its simplest form for sheep to cows would be equal to 17 for 3 so for every three cows that we have the farmer is going to have 17 sheep and vice versa so now we're going to have a look at something that's slightly different we're going to learn how we can split a quantity into a given ratio so let's see how this works by looking at this example. So what if we're told that £30 is shared between two friends, Martin and John, in the ratio of 2 to 1, and we're asked to calculate how much does each of these friends get. So we have a total of £30, and we're told that the ratio is 2 to 1, and we know which is which because of the order that the names occur. So because it's Martin then John, that means Martin would be the 2 and John would be the 1. So we can write this out like this. So we would have Martin and then John. And the ratio would mean that 
for every £2 Martin gets, John would receive £1. So basically what I like to do to begin a question like this when we want to split a ratio is count how many parts we have in total. So we're told that Martin has two parts and John has one. So that means in total we have three parts between both of them. And because of this, what we can then do is divide the £30 we have in total into the, each of the three parts that we have so we can get how much money we have for one part. So to do that, we would have the total, which is 30. And then we could divide this by 3 because that's how many parts we have in total. And if we do 30 divided by 3, that's going to give us an answer of 10 or £10. So that means that for one part between both of them, that's going to be equal to £10. And then if we go back to our ratios, we can see that Martin has two parts and John has one. So to calculate Martin's first, we know that one part is equal to £10. So if Martin has two, that's going to be equal to to times the £10 and that means he's going to receive a total of £20 and if John only receives one part then that's just going to be the 1 times the 10 and that means John's going to receive a total of £10 so that means that Martin will receive £20 and John will receive £10 and we add both of them together and that gives us a total of £30 and that's just a way of verifying that our results make somewhat sense so let's try another example. So this time we're told that there are 28 passengers on a bus and that the ratio of men to women on that bus is 6 to 1. And we've been asked to figure out how many men are there on, on the bus. So in total, we have 28 passengers and we know that the ratio for men to women is equal to 6 to 1. So that means that for every 6 men on the bus, we only have 1 woman. So to figure this out again, what I like to do is figure out how many parts we have in total. So again, we have six parts men, one part women. So in total, that means we would have seven parts. And then what I would do is divide the amount of things that we have. In this case, it's passengers. So 28 passengers divided into the seven parts. So we can figure out what it is for one part. And that would just simply be 28 divided by seven. And we know that seven goes into 28 four times. So that means 28 divided by 7 is just equal to 4. So that means we have 4 passengers per 1 part. And now because we have this information, we can calculate the amount of men and women both on the bus. So because we know that there's 6 parts men, well we can say that 6 multiplied by the 4 gives us 24. And then just simply the 1 multiplied by the 4 gives us 4. So that means that on this bus, there are 24 men and four women. So the last few examples, we've only been looking at an example where we have to split up a quantity into two parts, but this time we have three parts. So let's have a look. We're told that a sum of 120 pounds is divided up between three friends, Molly, Sam, and Lauren, into the ratio of three, four, five. And we've been asked to figure out how much Lauren receives from this. So let's take information from this question. We're told that we have a total sum equal to £120 and the ratio between the three friends, so for Molly, Sam and Lauren, I'm just going to write M, S for Sam and L for Lauren into the ratio 3, 4, 5. So that means that for every three parts Molly receives, Sam will receive 4 and Lauren will receive 5. So again, just like the last time, we want to ask ourselves, how many parts do we have in total? Well, we have 3 plus 4 plus 5. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus another 5 gives us 12. So that means in total, we have 12 parts between the three friends. And if we wanted to figure out how much would be for one part, then it would simply be the total of 120 divided by how many parts we have, which is 12. And that means that we're going to get an answer of £10. So that means that for one part we have £10. And now we have this information we can calculate how much each of the friends will receive. So Molly has three parts so she will receive 3 times 10 that will be £30. Sam has four parts so that will be 4 times 10 which will be about £40. And then Lauren who has the highest ratio and that's what the question is asking us to figure out she will receive 5 times 10, which would be equal to £50. So therefore, for our answer, 
that's just simply going to be £50. And again, what we can do just to check if we've done everything correctly is to add up the final quantities, so 30, 40 and 50, and we should end up with the 120. So 30 plus 40 is 70, and 70 plus 50, yep, that gives us 120. So that means that we've did this correctly. So we said that ratios can be used to compare two or more quantities with one another, and we do this by using colon to separate the ratio. So this would mean that for one thing, and another thing, let's just say cats and dogs, for every one cat we would have two dogs. And we also said that ratios are typically put in its simplest form, so in other words, they can't be simplified any further. And we learned that once we have a ratio, then we can calculate how much of something that we have. And we did this two ways in this lesson. The first of all was if we'd just given one quantity of the two that we are comparing. So in this case, if we had three cats, we could see that this would be scaled up to give us six dogs because the ratio is one to two. So that means if the one becomes three, we have times that by three. And then to get for the, what it is for the two, we have to times that by three also, and that gives us six dogs. Or we could just be given an amount in total. So we could be told that we have 30 animals in total and we would have to figure out the ratio for each of these. And the first thing that we said was we can calculate how many parts we have. We could then calculate how many animals are a part of one part and then we could use this information to tell us how many of each individual thing that we have. So I hope this lesson on ratios has been useful to you and if that's been the case be sure to give the video a thumbs up. But if you have any questions on this topic just drop a comment down below and if you'd like to see more content like this be sure to be subscribed to our channel or head over to our website at penguin-learning.com Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.